Good day. Welcome to our Christmas 2016 series, Jesus Now, looking at Christmas through a different lens. Instead of using the normal lens of expectancy, we are looking through the lens of the consequences of Jesus' birth. Let's look today at the shepherds. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, The shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20 Shepherds were not sophisticated middle-class people. They were down-to-earth, rugged, hard-working men who tended and took care of flocks of sheep, mostly belonging to rich people. Some of them had a special role in looking after the flocks that produced lambs for the temple sacrifices in Jerusalem. It is known that these were pastured on the field surrounding Bethlehem because it was close to Jerusalem. With that in mind, consider the fact that Jesus was to become the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. John 1 verse 29. Isn't that remarkable? But there's something else too. Jerusalem was King David's city, but Bethlehem was his hometown. That's why Joseph had to travel to register there, because he belonged to the house and line of David. With these ideas in mind, It's good to reread verses 8 to 11 again. It all comes together into what we can only think of as God's superb plan for introducing his son to the world. These shepherds may well have been ordinary people representing the rank and file of humankind. However, they were very privileged people too. That night out in the fields, unexpectedly, The curtain between heaven and earth was drawn back sufficiently for God's messengers to be seen and heard. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Then a little later we read, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. The message they brought was good news of great joy to all people. The Saviour, The long-awaited-for Messiah had been born in Bethlehem. It was made pretty clear to them that they were to bear witness to this tremendous event by visiting the baby and then passing on the good news to others. But what does all this say to us? First of all, it tells us that Jesus is for all people. Good news of his birth was entrusted to what a poet has called a, a few farm workers. News of his resurrection was entrusted to a woman with a dubious history, Mary Magdalene. Jesus is for everyone, whatever their social rank or moral background. 
Jesus is the Saviour. Jesus specialises in forgiving the past and creating a new future for all who put their faith in him. Secondly, these shepherds did what was required of them. They went off immediately to find the baby and confirm what the angel had said. They were keen. They were eager to do what God wanted from them, which is a mark of true faith. Mind you, if we had been among them, I think the excitement of heaven breaking through in the encounter with the angels and in the birth of God's Son would have sent us hurrying down to Bethlehem as well. And thirdly, they told everyone what had happened. They witnessed to others about their experience and the message they'd heard. Another mark of genuine faith is that we become so thrilled with what's happened to us that we simply overflow. We tell everyone about it. That's what happened with Jesus' disciples about 33 years after this. They just couldn't stop telling everyone the good news that Jesus was risen from the dead, conquering death. Finally, the shepherds glorified and praised God for all the things they'd seen and heard. They did not draw attention to themselves. They did not entertain a special status mentality because God had chosen them for this important role in the nativity. It's a mark of true spirituality that all glory goes to God for the experiences he grants them. And did you notice in verse 19? A little question for each of us to consider. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Whenever we celebrate Christmas, do we ponder its significance for us as individuals as well as groups of people?